inherited their life from their father. Why are you looking from pillar to post? While the answer is Jesus Christ. Tell you never. Louder. Wherever you are looking, you won't find answer. Permanent answer is in Jesus Christ. Permanent. But the way we are seeking for him is not the way we ought to. We are seeking for him, for him to give us. That's why every time, give, give, give. You have not gone beyond yourself. For others, can you sacrifice your life that they enter heaven? Ask you never. Others, can you sacrifice your life that they enter heaven? Thank you. That's a, always have that. Because that genuine love. He first loved me. I didn't love him, Jesus. He first loved me. Then the rest followed. He surrendered his life for me. While I was still a sinner, while I was still fighting and kicking against salvation, Christ died for me. He did not die now. When I was dead in trespass, when I knew nothing of him, he died for me. What are you doing for others that do not know Jesus? Discuss. What are you doing? So that when you are gone, they say, this lady lived for my salvation. Hmm? Discuss, please. What are you doing for others that do not know Jesus? Yes. Your office stuff. Your family people that hate you? What? You hated Jesus. You hated Jesus. Who here was born loving Jesus? Ask each other. <laughs> Discuss truth. This is truth. Now when you know him, oh... I don't know. You are known by him. You don't know him. Because right now, Jesus knows you, but you don't know him. Tell your neighbor. Right now, Jesus knows you, but you don't know him. That's a problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, sit down. I forgot you are here. I think it was on Tuesday. Tuesday. Today is what? Wednesday. When were we here? And Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, I said, if it will be great. Becoming a man or woman of God. That's tonight. Because you are just calling each other these titles as if it's a jacket you wear. It's when you become this person that prayer will be effective. It's when you become this person that all this complaining, murmuring will vanish. Becoming a man of God. Becoming a woman of God. So that as we start prayer tonight and you become that, your, the whole area changes about you. You don't pray and wondering. No. Desire to be a man of God. Desire to be a woman of God. Tell your neighbor. 
Let's read Deuteronomy 33, verse 1, please. Deuteronomy, yes. chapter 33, verse 1. Yes. Now this is the blessing which Moses, the man of God, ah. blessed the children of Israel before his death. Again, please. Now... This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. You hear the title? You cannot become a man of God before you are even born again. It's impossible. the man of God, how much this name means. Ask your neighbor and discuss. You've been calling each other's titles. The man of God, mm. how much this name means. Yes. How much? You are not even afraid to call each other this. Number one. This man of God, he is a man who comes from God. Chosen by God and sent by God. Number one, one, this is a man of God, chosen by God. And sent by God. He's a man who comes from God. You cannot just be chosen. Where do you come from? Hmm? Chosen by? Coming from? God. Sent by? God. Everything is God. He walks with God. And he lives in God's fellowship. He walks with God and he lives in God's fellowship. That is. Simple. So you don't have to pump up things to look spiritual. You don't have to look whatever because you've got constant fellowship with God. You are not outside of God's fellowship. Hmm? You see what God sees, not what man sees. Hmm? With those points, how many can say you are walking there? Cora. Yes. Thank you, Prophet, for the teaching. Yes. Uh, I'm found wanting in all the points that the Prophet has given. But there's grace. That's why you're here. Amen. This is not for the few, but it's for the dedicated. It's God who chooses. It's God who says, yeah, you are. Come. I want you. You don't choose yourself here. Those who choose themselves are the ones confusing men of God. Tell your neighbor. Choose themselves are the ones confusing men of God. Yes. Thank you so much for your honesty. A man of God carries the mark of God's presence. Ask your neighbor now. A man of God carries the mark of God's presence. Ask your neighbor, what presence are you carrying? What presence are you carrying? If you cannot see the presence on your man of God, woman of God, they don't have any. Because you should see there's a mark 
of God's presence. You are quiet. You are not happy. <laughs> These are principles we learn so that we don't confuse as we start seeking. You don't jump here, jump here, take this, take this. You take from internet, you take from everywhere. Then you come to impress people. You are impressing people. You are empty of God. God has not sent you. God has not given his spirit in you. So what you are doing is flesh. That's classic reason, fame, popularity. That's why you dress this much. So people see dress. They don't see God. Tell your neighbor. People see dress. They don't see God. That's why people look at. They look at dress. They don't see God. And when you say, oh, there comes man of God. There comes woman of God. When you are a genuine man of God, you look at what they say, man of God, you look down. Say, mercy, Lord. Because this is deception. For people to come out of this, I don't know. It will take grace of God. Because it's polluted word. It's not genuine word of God. It's human word. This lady, this man will vomit. Human, it will not change you. It will burden you. You went into your congregation, light. You are coming back, very heavy. You just want to sleep. True or false? Mm. Carrier of good news. Carrier of good news. How can it be a burden to people? You are still looking at man of God, woman of God. You judge later yourselves. You are going to be wiser. Hello? Yeah. This is a roadmap now. Don't come out of this. A man of God is a man who lives for God and he lives for God's will. He lives for God and he lives for God's will. So in there, there's no will of his. You cannot give God second chance and you say, man of God. Oh, I won't be around this Sunday. I'm going where, where. Okay, what about the men of God, people of God that are waiting on you, man of God? <laughs> you can see. His whole being is ruled by the glory of God. And he is involuntarily and unceasingly causes people to think of God. And he is involuntarily and unceasingly causing people to think of God. Are you that person? Say it again. And he is involuntarily and unceasingly causing people to think of God. When they see you, that's what they look. You don't tell them. People just put themselves together. Tell your neighbor. <laughs> tell them. He's just putting people together. No, no, no. People put themselves together. I don't, don't put people together. It's people put themselves together. I'm not a captain. <laughs> hmm? You don't tell Immediately is coming. That's why they say, hey, there comes a man of God. Why? Discuss. <laughs> when he comes, people say, hey, there comes the man of God. Why?
Comfort? Why? Thank you, Dad, for the teaching. I believe it is because of the points that Dad have been sharing. I don't know the points. Why? <laughs> that the man of God comes from God, chosen by God, and sent by God. Okay, but how do you say that? Those you have heard now, you never knew that, but you said, the man of God is coming. How did you know he's a man of God? You didn't have those points. What caused you to say he's a man of God, woman of God? Philip, sit down, madam. You are reading points I gave you now. Uh, thank you for the teaching. Uh, on my side, um, when I see a man of God coming, I used to look at the dressing eloquence of speech and what people say about him. But I didn't know that it's not all about that. It's not about eloquence of speech and what people say about him. No. I'll ask you, eloquent of speech, so you love people like Apollos, leaving out Paul. Yes. And what people say, hmm. not what you know. No. You are lost. It's true. Very you are true. lost. You can't be steady. God cannot trust you. Yes, Sunny, in the back. Thank you, Philip. God can trust you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for opening my eyes. Um, the question was: When you see a man of God coming, you see him coming. When you see him coming, why do you say the man of God is coming? I'll give an honest answer for myself. Um, firstly, I tend to marvel for some reason that I also do not know, and I reflect personally what, what is going on around me or what am I doing. And it's something that I don't know, but it, it happens. So that's what made me to believe to say he's a man of God. And that's why you give him title. Yes. Come back here. Yes, you. Thank you so much. I saw you are looking as if you are waiting to see the man of God. Uh, thank but, you, Dad, for the opportunity. Um, it's only now that I'm coming to, uh, as the prophet is teaching, but prior to this, I had no understanding of what a true man of God is and everything that I followed and believed in was influenced by what the world standards are. Yes. So, in short, you are not following man of God. You yes, are following sir. the spirit of the world. Yes, sir. So, if you follow and the spirit of the world and you don't find in this man eloquence of speech, wonderful shoes, good, everything, as if they are going for Mr. Anderson, competition. You take four hours to put dress, and you take one hour to teach. So you are coming to show who? All right, thank you. You can imagine the congregation that is lost. They don't know man of God. Anyone who tells them that's a man of God, they go there, lay hands on me. Prophesy to me. What is blocking you is false prophecies that blocked you. You don't dish prophecies as if they're fat cakes. The one giving out prophecy is responsible. And what happens to the recipient of the false prophecy? She is also responsible. So it's not the one only who gave force, but you also, why did you accept? Yeah, Pateka, tell your neighbor. It's not just the one who gives force, but it's the one who accepts. Yes, also. So, the giver and the receiver, both condemnation. Thank you. 
the man of God, in his heart, the life of God has taken its rightful place as the all in all. The man of God, in his heart, the life of God has taken its rightful place as the all in all. The man of God, in his heart, the life of God has taken its rightful place as all in all. As the? As the all in all. Yes. As the all in all. So in the man of God's heart is complete with God only. Ask never. Is that how you are? Is that how you are? Whether sickness, whether insult, whether pain, whether embarrassment, whether shame, it has got no room in my heart. I can't change. Because in my heart, God has taken his rightful place. Is the all in all. I can't compare anything. Even if there's shame, I say, so what? God knows this. I'm his child. There's a purpose. There's a greater purpose. The meaning of this will come later, and it will be greatness. But you're fighting circumstance that God has given. And after talking human words, and you win, you say you're a woman of God. It's just your... Slippery tongue. Your tongue is very slippery. Whatever discussion you start, you win. So how can you say it's God? Tell it never. It's your slippery tongue. It's your slippery tongue. And from there you say I've got God's speech. What God's speech? When God turns you, makes you into his person, he touches your lips. Read Isaiah. This fluent speech of yours, it's you. Tell your neighbor. <laughs> Thank you. Speech of yours is you. Again, please. This fluent speech of yours is you. Yes, it's vocabulary from university. When God touches you, he says, you are my man, you are my woman. He changes. You speak on his behalf to his people. Tell your neighbor. You speak on his behalf to his people. Yeah. So you don't speak to impress, but to deliver message. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Dad, for the grace. It's true? Yes, it's true, Dad. I am, yes, I'm one of those that have been taken by the eloquent speech and thinking because one is able to speak and articulate English, then therefore they carry something, which I'm learning now that it's not necessarily the case. It's not. It's not. Before you judge, don't look at outside appearance. No. Stop that. See deeper. See deeper. Thank you. A true man of God, or man of God, his one desire is that God should have that place 
of prominence in people's hearts throughout the world. So it shouldn't just be him. No. God should have that place of prominence in people's hearts throughout the world. Because that's a purpose. Not you to be noticed and acknowledged, but that people in their hearts, they have that prominence of God. Because you, you are jealousy for God. You only speak for God. You desire people to be like you on God's side. With no doubt. That's how it is. So? King David, what do you say so far? Thank you, Prophet. Uh, up to so far, I'm very much challenged. Uh, the message is opening my eyes to look deeply in what a man of God has to conduct himself. Yes. Thank you. It's not casual. That you, you, that's why you can come today. Three weeks, you're out. And wherever you go, they call you man of God, woman of God. And you are, you are happy. It's sitting in deception. Their characteristics, you look in a man of God. So you don't just address people just like that. I would rather say, hello, you, how are you, my brother? Or oh, there's a preacher man coming. Thank you, King David. Yeah, it's better. There's a preacher man coming. Because he can preach anything. But when you say man of... Ah. Wanted man of God or woman of God. Are you that one? Not wanted dead or alive. <laughs> that is. That's what you say. <laughs> That's the teaching. Huh? Thank you, Prophet, for this grace. Mm. You know, uh, where we, since we were coming from, all the places we have been, it's always like when the man of God enter, so called man of God, he will know. He will be different from everybody. The, his dressing, even the way sometimes they will show you my watch, do, how much I bought it. They will tell him the combination. Their shoes, and the, if you see their family, even the wife, sometimes they dress, you know. You will know their chair at the altar will be so big. <laughs> Even their children, the way they address everything. You see that this family, you will tell yourself this family is family of God. But it's now that when I come here and by looking at you, looking at you, I ask myself, oh, this is quite a difference from what we know, from where we're coming from. You don't, it's not about dressing. It's, about, it's not about appearance. It's about what you carry in the light, inside. The light in you. The light you are shining to the people. Not the way you talk. Not the way you, you are position. You present a position to the people. Like, you know, there is one that happened some time ago. A man, a, man, a, man, a man of God is telling the congregation that he bought his third jet during the lockdown. And his congregation is clapping for him. <laughs> I don't worship him. These are real. What has that got to do with salvation? Oh, that. What has that got to do with salvation? Okay, that man that where even now, if uh, let me see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to see. Why you, you find it difficult to worship God? Hmm? 
I just want to say a small example. Okay. Come. You love God? Eh? Lie down. Lie down. That's all. Now, this hearing God, hearing your voice, and obeying God to do this. Now when you are in your suit, <laughs> discuss it. Now it's hearing God, hearing your voice, and obeying. To do it. it takes, you have heard the voice of God, worship me, lie down in your suit. Then your voice say, you are in a suit. Then you tell your voice, this is God speaking, it's not human. So you lie down. You are failing here. Worship has taken us into God's presence. Ah, you are looking at your lipstick. You are looking at your nails. All these things, we shall bury them here. Here. Wherever they will bury you. It's finished. But those things now have blocked you knowing God. Thank you, my girl, for your obedience. It's what blocks you. This is a place of salvation. It's an oasis of life. But a lot of people, when they look at tent, look, wherever Christ is, is and is living and is active, also, uh, things of offense will be plenty. You coming from wherever you are coming, you look, the tent is dirty. Yeah, dirty. No, no. You didn't come for this. Hear the message. Then when, no, when, <laughs> when you hear the message, you don't even look at this. It's a place of offense here. Invite some of your people. They'll be offended. How come? How come? No, no, no. Just sit. It's okay. Switch off your engine. Switch off your motor. The man of God is coming in this place. Tell your neighbor. Switch off your engine. Switch off your motor. The man of God is coming. It's not this. And there's a purpose why we are here thrown in the middle of the wilderness. First you are the one who said it's far. Here you are. Tell your neighbor. First you are the one who said it's far. Here you are. <laughs> Again. First you are the one who said it's far. Here you are. Men of God, women of God, such men of God are what the world needs. The world needs what? Men of God. Oh, of God. yes. The world needs servants of God, woman or man. The world needs them. You are talking now about worldly spirit, not men or women from God. They are needed in the world, and God is seeking for these men of God, women of God, seeking that he may fill them with himself. <laughs> that what? He may fill them with himself. That is. Because right now, you are full of yourself, you are not full of God. And this is the problem? I can't hear you. You are full of yourself, you are not full of God. Yes. You are full of yourself, you we'll carry a Bible that you don't know scripture. You're carrying the Bible and walking in a different way. What for? Is that how you walk? Walk normal. And when you know God, you're a normal person. You, there's no, you're not 
what people think. Talking different, walking different, doing things different. What for? Picture where you're coming from. That's why when you enter here, you look at me, you look down and up, down and up, then you're offended. And I look at you and say, ah. <laughs> It's good that you're offended because your heart has been revealed. Tell your neighbor. It's good that you're offended because your heart has been revealed. Mm. You, God wants these men and women of God to be filled with himself and then he will send them into the world to help others know him. That's what is happening here. To help others know him. Yes. People don't know God. You know that, my daughter? Yeah? I can hear you? Yes, dad. Yeah. So why does man of God, woman of God, filled of God's spirit? What's the purpose? For people to help others know him. That's it. Not to boast. This is God, Holy Spirit me. I got this and this. No, 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 no. It's to, that's why I can come to you four or five times. Why? I desire that you also know this God. To take out all this darkness to take out all this misconception of God, to, to bring understanding. Because when you got understanding of God, there's clarity. Have you seen? You, you not miss it. That's a purpose. When God finds man of God, woman of God, he fills this person with himself so that now you are filled with God. You go where? To the world for what? To help others. No. Is that how you've been living your life? No. Discuss. I said discuss. Don't tell me. Without saying any word. Can you enter a place and say you are a Christian? Ask your neighbor. Without saying any word, can you enter a place and say you are a Christian? People just pointed to you. You are a Christian. So how did you know? Or sometimes just smile. Because you have to find out this discernment. Is it of God? Before you expose yourself to something you cannot handle. You just smile you, until you hear from God. The question and all is of God. Then you can have conversation because you can have, you can be talking to a foreign spirit that has picked you. And you're busy now here. Yes, uh, church, yeah, this church and that church. We got message there. Do you know who we're talking to? Look at Paul, wherever he went, before he could open his mouth, first he had to find out whether these are true Christian. You to anyone, you are born again. I'm also born again. Hallelujah, sister, brother. We can start intercession. Ah. Prove. That's why the little that you had is now going down. Moses was such a man of God that men or people naturally spoke of him this way. Moses, the man of God. Naturally. Every servant of God should strive to be a living witness of what God is to him or her. A living witness of what God is to him or her. 
That's why when you go home, you teach your family. You can't just be yourself, man of God, woman. No, no, you teach your family. Man of God should have or must have fellowship with God. A man or woman of God must have fellowship with God. Yes. This fellowship should be our highest priority. Highest. You can be so full of God's holy presence, you can be so full of God's holy presence that when people see or think of you, this name will come to mind, man of God. Eh? I can't hear. You can. You can see. No, you can be so full of God's holy presence. So full of God's holy presence. That when people see or think of you, uh -huh. his name will come to mind, man of God. Yes. They don't have doubt. They'll think. They'll think. Me, they'll think of you. In their own houses, in their cars, in their offices. Even when you ring, you ring phone. Dwa. Ah! Man of God. Immediately. These are the kind of men and women the world and God equally need them. He needs them. God needs this. The world needs people. Men and women of? God. The world needs them. And God equally needs them. Why is this? Because the world by, by, by sin has fallen away from God. That's why the world needs the men of God, women of God. And God needs them to fill them with himself so that they can reveal God to the world. In Christ, the world has been redeemed for God. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Vutumi. How can you tell the world or a person how they ought to be? <laughs> Thank you, Dad, for the grace. I do not have an idea, Dad. Yes. Let me answer for you. God has no way of showing people what they ought to be except through people of God. Repeat that. God has no way of showing people what they ought to be except through people of God. Again, my daughter. God has no way of showing people what they ought to be except through people of God. <laughs> so you, person of God, 
can people know how or how they ought to be? Discuss. So you, people of God, can people know how they ought to be? Pastor Sama. <laughs> Home, fight. Work, fight. Human rights. <laughs> what? You're a child of God. Don't bring these earthly things. Don't. No. Thank I'm you very much. For that. My own right. I'm fighting for my own rights. The only fight you have to have fight of faith. Finish. Yes, please. Thank you, Dad. I cannot. Why? Because I am not a man of God. Uh, who said so? <laughs> Thank you very much. That I was very blind. Now you are shining light on me on the truth. Thank you. Thank you. In the man of God, woman of God, God's life, God's spirit, God's power are working. <laughs> Thank In you, Tumi. man of God, a woman of God, mm -hmm. God's life, God's spirit, and God's power are working. Yes. Yes. Now, where is the argument there? God's life, God's spirit, and God's power. Are, working. are working. Abigail? Thank you so much, Baba. Um, even though I don't know what does that mean, but I agree. Why I'm saying this, I always say, when you look at the politicians, mm -hmm. they fight for power. Yes. But that power is like two minute noodles. And when you look at the men of God, like true men of God, wherever they are, wherever they go in the whole world, everybody will feel that, they will feel God's presence. And they don't do anything. They are not arrogant. They don't have pride, but they just have something that will make people to be attracted to them. I think it's because of the love they have for the humankind, but you can see and you can feel that really you are with the man of God. Thank yeah. you so much. Good. Where we make a mistake is here. Man, you and me, we are created for God. <laughs> so, you, uh, can you say that about you? Do you know that you are created for God? That God might live work and display his glory in you and through you. That's how you are created. You are created for God, not all these things you are rushing for. No. God is to be all in all. God is to be all in all. Again. God is to be all in all. Here, we, look, we looked at Moses. Now let's look at uh, a man of God. John 14, verse 16, verse 20, verse 23.
John 14. John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give, he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. You can read again, please. <coughs> there it is. John chapter 14. A moment, please. There it is. You can know whether you've got father, you can know whether you got Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ all in you. You can know. Or you just read. Jesus fulfills what he says. So it's not just a saying there. That's a life to live, not a life to read about. Yes. John chapter 14, verse 16. Yes. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Forever. Because Jesus was going. Now, but how are we going to live, man? He said, no, 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 don't worry. You who know me, you who love me, you who say yeah, for me, I pray, my Father, he will give you another helper. Another comforter. Another me. You hear that? Another him. So if you have him, how come you say you go struggle? Huh? If you have him, how come you say you go struggle? Continue, read the place. <laughs> John chapter 14, verse 20. Yes. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, mm -hmm. and you in me, and I in you. Verse 23. No, 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 don't be in a hurry. Sorry. That's why you miss what Holy Spirit is saying, because you want to finish sentence. Even as it started at the beginning, you can be arrested by him. That day, you know that I am in the Father and you are in me, me, I'm in you, and the Father is in us. So look at us, we are one. Don't read to finish, read to understand. Thank you, Uncle. Mm -hmm. Verse 23, Jesus answered mm -hmm. and said to him, yes. if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father, will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Thank you. Read again, please, the last one. That's true, genuine. No fakeness, no what. Because if Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit, are dwelling in you, he said, we come and make our home. Not our house. Home. You know home. We will come and make our, our home. home. Now, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit coming to dwell in you. That what type of home do you have for God to dwell in? Jesus to dwell in. Holy Spirit to dwell in. That's, that's woman of God. That's man of God. A characteristic. You can see. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dwell in this one. Hmm? They dwell in That's why even tonight you offer prayer 
Father hear you because he's with you. You don't crank prayer to impress with good English. One John four thirteen and sixteen. One John chapter four thirteen and sixteen. One John chapter four verse thirteen to sixteen no. and sixteen. Yeah. By this we know that we abide in him. Mm -hmm and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Uh -huh. Verse then how do you know? There is, you, you say you, he abides in you and all. Has he given you his spirit? Hello? Has he given you his spirit? Eh? Yes? Thank you, Dad, for the opportunity. Mm. To be honest with you, Dad, I don't know if he has given me then his spirit. what are you saving? I, I just ignorantly do so, that mm. I need to pray, but I don't know whether he's really dwelling in me. Why do you have to go to prayer when you don't know whether he knows you? Can you go outside there and any car passes, you say, Father, Father, give me water. Father, Father, give me house. Ask your neighbor. Can you go outside? Any car. Can you go to the car outside and say, Father, Father, give me water. Father, Father, give me Do you? No. The problem with our modern Christianity, we don't have foundation of salvation. So we just speak things. And with your internet and television, anywhere, because here they say, no, the message is hard. Let me turn to Afghanistan. Tell the neighbor. Here they say the message is hard. Let me turn to Afghanistan. Then you just hear somebody just preaching anything. He said, this one is good. This one I understand. Kind spirit. Thank you. Hear this and don't dilute it. To be a complete man or woman of God, it starts from 2 Timothy chapter 3 16 to 17. That will make you complete. If this has not taken place in you, you are incomplete. Tell your neighbor. If this has not taken place in you, mm -hmm. then you are incomplete. Yes, please. Yes. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Mm. All scripture is given by inspiration of God uh -huh. and is profitable for doctrine. That is. What? Scripture, do you know that has profited you doctrinary? Whereby you, you can stand on it, unshakable, unmovable, fearless. God has said, Things can come against you, everything. You see, Scriptures are profited from scripture, not man. You are living by man word. Oh, sister, you, you offer prayer. Let's offer prayer together. Sister is worse than you. Sister needs salvation. <laughs> Tell the neighbor. Sister is worse than you. Sister needs salvation. Yes. Continue. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That is. But you, when the scriptures speak to you, you turn the page over. Then when are you going to be complete? You are not yet complete. 
Let scripture complete you. It comes for doctrine. If your doctrine is wrong, scriptures will tell you what you believe is wrong. This is what you've got to believe. A lot of us, we like reading other people's books. Yes, but it's not all truth. They'll write from their sides. Some of the books are just money. They just write one sentence, then the rest, they just write anything, anything. Then you finish all that 300 pages. Tell you never. <laughs> they just write anything, anything, then you finish the 300 pages. But it doesn't change you. If there'll be grace tomorrow, but I don't know, I'm overloading myself. You cannot have Bible study minus genuine direction of God. Because Bible study should lead you to genuine prayer. That's genuine Bible study. Then how do we study Bible? The way you study Bible and the way I study Bible, we might differ. Even Bible study, you have to be taught. You don't just pick Jeremiah, you pick Isaiah, you pick Revelation, then you say, let's pray. Which doctrine are we praying? Okay, what do you want to find out? Can you see? Where do you want to find out? In Isaiah, Jeremiah, you even say in Timothy, tell your neighbor. Timothy. <laughs> For what all this? If, if God grant me grace, yes, tomorrow, because to go to start, it's a year of wonders. Amen. But these wonders, they got to be brought from heaven to earth. Yes. That's a key thing. So it's in Bible study. In the morning, when you wake up in rise and shine, whom do you want to meet? Is it God or your issues? Discuss. In the morning, when you wake up, and rise and shine. Who do you want to meet? Is it God or your issues? I've been hearing. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not telling us about God. We're not leading us to God so that these things can stop. Okay, 17. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 17. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That is. That the man of God may be complete. The people who say man of God, woman of God, question, are they complete? Huh? The people who say man of God, woman of God, question, are they complete? Are they thoroughly equipped for every good work? Are they thoroughly equipped for every good work? You can, but you are lazy. You just want not to sleep. Oh, thank you for the message, Lord. Uh, thank you, bless Prophet Banda. And uh, so that tomorrow he give us more revelation. <laughs> then he even said, um, the other thing, Lord, I forgot. 
bless us with a sanctuary. <laughs> because we are short of money now, bless us. Eh? So that we go to Shiloh, it will be closer than Holy Land. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. You can be truly a man of God or a woman of God. And how do you know that you're a man of God and a woman of God? A man who knows and proves these three things. Number one, God is all. Number two, God claims all. Number three, God works all. Yeah. Yes, Sunny, how do you know? To become man of God, woman of God. Dead today, I'm caught. Oh, only today. <laughs> <laughs> Not only today, Father, but there's enlighten, enlightenment in me now because it's easy to carry a title and say, Man of God, Man of God, by word. But the decorum that the person carries, the actual Man of God that he carries, is not there. I've been saying Man of God based on the outward looks on the speech, articulation of words, but there's been nothing dead. That's why you overload yourselves buying jacket every month. True, Father. Man of God. You think jacket make you man of God? It's true. High heel shoe. You think high heel shoe make you woman of God? Mm. Nothing. They are full now in your wardrobe. <laughs> and they're having problem now. You are worried this Sunday, what will I wear? Because people know I'm a man or a woman of God. Then also, Prophet Banda say, Saturday deliverance. That's the time I do my hair for people to see me on Sunday. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. <laughs> we have left Jesus. We are following after our own things. That's why Christianity to you is burdensome. It's not enjoyable. You got no communication. You got no fellowship. You got, you just come. So when people ask you, where are you coming from? Church. Church this time, this night. Why this late? That's our church. No, it's Satanism. <laughs> Calling something holy and holy. Punishment comes from Holy Spirit. That's it. They are not innocent. I'm telling you the truth. How long does it take to build man of God and to bring message and you just say carelessly? In the world, there's no neutral weight. It's either positive or negative, and it will produce. Tell your neighbor. In the world, there is no neutral word. It's either positive or negative. And it produces. Yes. These are the three things. When you know, master them. God is all. God claims all. He claims all. Even your motor vehicle. God claims your children. Your bedroom. He claims... God works. Oh. So what are you saying? No, this is mine. Everything you have is borrowed. He claims all. Plus you. He claims you. So I don't know where your thinking comes from. Every man of God. Kathy. Every woman of God has understood 
that God asks and must have all. God asks and must have all. Again? God asks and must have all. When God asked you, did you give all? No, I didn't. God is all in? All. And God asks, and he must have all. all. Tell your neighbor. God is all. God claims all, and God was all. Uh huh. And God asks and must have all. If you start living such a life, you won't have misery. Tell the neighbor. If you start living such a life, you won't have misery. No, you won't. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? And you are created for God. And this is the life he wants you to have. But see how distant you are. Yes, Corista? What have you learned? Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Dad. I have learned that um, God is all, and God claims all, and God works all. When, 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 when Dad was asking, have I given my all? Um, and for me, I realized, and it, it's sobering, Dad, that things that I claim to be mine, they're not mine, no. because it's, it, it is all God. That's and in fact, say. that's where all this fight in house, friendship, family start. It's mine. What for? What is yours? Okay, it's you who bought it by his grace, but it's not yours. Yeah. Tell the neighbor. It's you who bought it by his grace, but it's not yours. It's not. And God can ask for this. And he will not going to take part. He wants. That's how you give sacrifice. When they used to sacrifice animal, it was the whole. You cannot just bring a leg, left one. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. You cannot just bring a leg. <laughs> left leg. I'm taking this to God. So this is, thank you so much, Sunny. Your explanation has been excellent. A man of God lives only to give God his due and his glory. This is due to God. And as I give, it will bring glory to God. It's a sweet aroma. aroma. To live to give God his due and his glory. All glory. Start living this way. God will reward. He's a reward. God rewards his children. Now you have got me. Thank you. I'll reward you. I'll reward you. I'll reward you. And the reward is not for boasting. It's to make you more humble. Again. Can you see? <laughs> it's not for boasting. You know, it's, this is grace. Let God in the morning, morning watch, be all to you in the morning. Only God to be all to you. God. Now, you bypass God, you just want rent money. Tell your neighbor. You bypass <laughs> God, you just want rent money. Oh, my business to flourish. From who? <laughs> Instead of saying, Lord, salvation, the world will change. You know these are your people. We pray for salvation for them. And during the day, let God be your own. During the day. In your beautiful faces, in a upstairs building, let God be all to you during that day. Let your life be devoted to one thing. Tell your neighbor. 
To bring people to God and God to the people. To bring people to God and God to the people. Amen. Again. Let your life be devoted to one thing. Mm -hmm. To bring people to God and to God to the people. That's all. What is the problem there? That's what I'm devoted for. Because that's what you'll be rewarded on. Salvation of souls. Let this be your desire in church here and in the world. In the world, I mean your working place, your village where you go for Christmas, and your funeral places. Let people know God because you are of God. Are they going to fight? Yes, because they don't know him. You are changing the status quo. But you, instead of you to convert people to Christ, you are converted to them. Tell your neighbor. Instead of you converting people to Christ, you are converted to them. Hear what the man of God knew. Second Kings, chapter 1, verse 10. I love this guy. He was rough to the point. There's no diplomacy. Diplomacy is for you in the world. That's why the war will never finish. Yes. Second Kings, chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. So Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, mm -hmm. If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven yes. and consume you and your 50 men. And it happened. And fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Man of God. If then, you say I'm a man of God, I will declare something over you. And if truly a man of God, it will happen. So they are not careless people. They are not careless people. They are separated people. Because they wanted Elijah to come down. Like, you, you're playing around with me. Me to come down where you are. See what happened. He didn't come down. Those who are down were consumed. Come down to do what with you? I hear, hear in here now when we start prayer. The God who answers by fire is the true God. Have you seen it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> the God who came by fire is the true God. Have you seen it yourself? <laughs> and people also, the next one just copies also. God who answers by fire. Let fire. Which fire are you talking about? <laughs> True man of God is he who knows how to call down the fire because he has power with the God of heaven. You cannot just call down fire when you don't have power with the God of heaven. That's fake fire. It won't come down. The whole day you'll be saying fire, fire, fire. <laughs> Cutting this fire until you get tired, people give you water, you continue. <sighs> How do you get this power? The to know God. It is in the secret prayer habit of daily life that we learn to know God. Secret prayer habit that you learn to know God. And you learn his fire and your power with him. His fire and your power with him. Uh -huh. His fire and your power with him. Can't you see? Can you, there it is.
Okay. What is happening there is. Hi, sir. Can you borrow me your book? Thank you. Thank you so much. Where is this one? Hello? Yes, sir. But it's evident of God's presence. Because it wasn't time for prayer, it wasn't time for anything. But it's to confirm. That's confirmation. If you take this light, it's up to you. Somebody sitting down, then hot on buttock. Who hit the chair? Ask your neighbor, who hit the chair? Someone sitting down, mm. hot on buttocks, yeah. who hit the chair? Yes. May we know what it means to be man of God or woman of God? and what it implies. In Elijah, as we saw on Wednesday, in Moses, we see that being a man of God means a separation from every other interest. A separation from Every other interest. Again, my daughter? Means a separation? From every other interest. That is. You can't have 400 interests and you put God as number 44. And you say, man of God. Ah. Start with God. Then he'll tell you, all oh, this you don't need, all oh, this you don't need. It's a wastage of time. And you'll lack nothing anyway. So that, Junior, your entire identification is to honor God. <laughs> your entire identification is to honor God. Is no longer a man of the world, is a man of God. John 7 17 to 19. John 7 17 to 19. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. That is, if really you desire to know God's will, you know mm -mm, the way you speak. Continue. Verse 18. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory. That is. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. 
Why do you seek to kill me? And they wanted to kill him because of one simple miracle. Miracle provokes jealous and envy. Tell your neighbor. Miracle provokes jealous and envy. Miracle reveals people's issue. Miracle reveals people's issue. Mm-hmm. Why can't you not do that one? Why is prophet always going that side? Huh? Not here. Ask God why. Am I your servant? I follow what the Holy Spirit says. You just keep cool. Your turn will come. That's all. You think it's because you want to be number one. Look, it's so funny with God. You can be number one, but you will not be helped. You see, the last man is the one to be helped first. Say, so come here. You are number one, that's right. According to you, God, number one, number. But they start with num- number 99. Tell your neighbor. You can be number one, but the last one is helped first. You are supposed to have been taken number 99 line. Where you are, it's not right. But you're insisting. 38, verse 38. Mm-hmm. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Read again. John chapter 7, verse 38. Mm -hmm. He who believes in me, in Christ, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Not dead, dead water, filth water, living water. That's why I can say to the thirsty, come and drink. He gives. Do you give people living water? Man of God, woman of God, do you give people living water? Hmm? Let them. Do you give people living water? Let them living water. Do you? If you got question, ask.
inherited their life from their father. 